Well, I do not have something very innovative. Uh, I do not have something very political, but uh, yes, right? An idea, a way, a methodology, uh, a forward towards achieving gender parity in Afghanistan, which I believe will solve many other issues, right, in the society. The speaker before me spoke about justice, spoke about democracy, right, spoke about a couple of other points. We all appreciate and value them. But I do believe that uh, gender parity within the society, within organization, can also solve many issues. So, today's topic that I've selected for myself is womanizing organization. I'll be discussing two points here, uh, why and how. You might see that how is discussed first here because I'm targeting individually all of you. I'm not going to give any academic speech here. I'm not going to do any kind of skills building. The only thing is to put some lights on the way that can help us right, towards gender parity within organization and society. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, I studied two books, right? And the content that you see within my presentation are taken from these two books. Both books are written by John C. Maxwell, right? One is Developing the Leaders Within You and the second, Developing the Leaders Around You. Uh, you can study both these books. I will not talk about the books. You will learn a lot of things and you will find a lot of interesting things within it. Move on to the next slide. Okay, so the first question is that uh, how can we bring gender parity within organization? How can we womanize organization? How can we empower organization? Again, I will not be using the terms and terminologies. I'll not be using the phrases and sentences commonly used within our ministries, uh, within our public service right, platform, or within the right, NGO sectors or the private sectors that we have in Afghanistan. No, that will be a different perspective. So let's focus on this different perspective that we have towards gender parity and women development. Next slide. Okay, uh, you might see that a story is here and I want you to read this story. I'll also read it with, your, with you because I want to talk about the different parts of it. And when I say you, it's basically that every individual lady that is sitting here in this right hall today, I am pointing all of you. My story is about you, so please focus about it. You will see that it says that after World War II, a general and his young lieutenant boarded a train in England. The only seats left were across from a beautiful young lady and her grandmother. So a young guy sits in front of right, a lady, a beautiful lady, and her grandmother. Let's see what happens. The general and the lieutenant sit facing the women. As the train pulled out, it went through a long tunnel. For about 10 seconds, there was total darkness. The story begins from here, when there is darkness. In, in the silence of the moment, those on the train heard two things, a kiss and a slap. Everyone on the train had his or her own perception of what happened. Listen, there was a darkness of 10 seconds. And in this 10 seconds, the people in the train heard two things. One, obviously the kiss, and second, a slap. So now, let's move on and see the perspective of the people regarding the slap and regarding the kiss. Move on, please. Okay, this is now the perception. This is the thinking that we have. The young lady thought to herself, I'm flattered that the lieutenant kissed me, but I'm terribly embarrassed that grandmother hit him. Yeah, definitely. The lady was kissed, so she was happy that she was kissed, but she was embarrassed that her grandmother, right, slapped back the lieutenant. 
The grandmother thought I am aggravated that the young man kissed my granddaughter, but I am proud she had the courage to retaliate. That's another perspective. That's another thinking. The woman was angry, but she was happy that at least her granddaughter slapped the guy. The general sat there thinking to himself, my lieutenant showed a lot of guts in kissing the girl, but why did she slap me by mistake? That's another thing. But what is the reality? What is the story? The reality is the lieutenant was the only one on the train who really knew what happened. In the brief moment of darkness, he had the opportunity to kiss a pretty girl and slap his general. Right? Yeah. Now, women, girls, this is society, right? The biggest, right, I would say stone, the biggest barrier that we see in the society of Afghanistan, right, in terms of gender development, in terms of gender parity, in terms of women, right, development, it's the different perspective. If I had a speaker before me, and that speaker was, right, a woman, I thought, well, that's not fair, right? The same way, different people sitting here, they would have their own mentality. So the first thing, women, right, if you want to develop, if you want to go ahead, if you want to promote, and if you want to have success. Forget the stories of, right, we do not have representation. We do not have, for example, uh, quota, or, right, there is injustice. No, forget these stories. If you want to be, right, on the top, if you want to touch this parity, right, goal, the only thing is, right, you have to forget everything and be that lieutenant. You have to kiss and you have to slap. If this is not happening, the gender parity will never ever come. Because you see, there are many barriers. Your grandmother is the first barrier, right? The general is another barrier. And the people sitting on the train, we did not speak about them. They are all barriers against, right, your development. So the first thing you need to do is learn the theory. And the theory is that you have to forget everything and you have to believe on yourself because you are the one who knew the real story, who knew right at how did you study, what problems did you face during your life, right? And how did you achieve the, right, the objective of your life? That objective at this stage might be very small objectives, right? The objective could be getting a simple job as an intern somewhere. Tomorrow as an assistant, the next day as an officer, the third day as a manager, and at the end, the leaders of this society. So if you want to be the leaders of the society, you have to forget these maths of the society and believe on yourself. So the first rule, kiss and slap. Good. Move on. Okay. This is for the organizations. This is for the leaders of the organization who believe on, right, gender parity and women development. But still there are missing things. Again, I'm putting a story here from the same book. It says that a woman went to a pet store and purchased a parrot to keep her company. She took her new pet home but returned to the next day to report the parrot hasn't said a word yet. Does it ha have a mirror? As the storekeeper, parrots like to be able to look at themselves in the mirror. So she bought the mirror and returned home. One struggle, thank you. The second thing, the next day she was back announcing that the bird still wasn't speaking. What about a letter? The storekeeper said, parrot enjoy walking up and down a letter. So she bought a letter and returned home. Another struggle, very good. Next slide, please. Sure enough, the next day she was back with the same story, still no talk. Does the parrot have a swing? Birds enjoy relaxing on a swing. She bought the swing and went home. The third struggle, thank you very much. The next day she returned to the store to announce the bird had died. 
I'm terribly sorry to hear that, said the storekeeper. Did the bird ever say anything before it died? What did the bird say? Yes, the lady replied. It said, don't they sell any food down there? Yeah. So, organizations, government of Afghanistan, international organizations. It's not only about posting the posters that gender parity is important. It's not about celebrating a day, 8th of March. I, I do respect 8th of March, but it's not only about that. It is about if we only believe that having some posters, having some presentations, and celebrating 8th of March will solve every issue, then you are killing the parrots. And you are playing with the lives of these beautiful parrots. No, that's not the way. If you want to speak with these parents, if you want to see the development of this parent, if you want to hear the beautiful voices of these parents, what you need to do is to feed them first. And when it comes to feeding, right, you have to see the real needs of these women. Today, see the differences that we have in terms of payment to the people, right? I mean, in our society is in much better position. Yes. A man in our society is earning much better way. So, what we are doing is only bringing the things we believe, right, can help the parrot, but no, the reality is not. So, the second thing, right, we have to remember as organizations, as leaders, as people, who are in decision level, right, decision making, right, levels. That if we want parity in organization, if we want the development of the woman in organization, and if we want to hear again, I repeat that, the beautiful voices of the right parrots, we need to give them food first. And when it comes, right, about food, security is there, education is there, remuneration is there, and so many other things you can define it in your own ways. So, this is the answer to the question, right, how? And it's about you, and it's about organization. Move on, please. Wait, but why? Yeah, that might be the question. Why are we giving ourselves this headache? The answer is, very simple, it is the right thing to do. Yes. If you put it right from justice perspective, it is the right thing to do. If you put it from the democracy perspective, it is the right thing to do. If you put it to the peace perspective, it is the right thing to do. If you put it right, right to the development side, it is the right thing to do. You can put this thing right into any umbrella. You can put it in any room. You can put it in any platform. Simply, it's the right thing to do. It's not about giving the rights. No, it's the right thing to do. So when something is right, there can not be any kind of why to it. So it's simply the right thing to do. But few of the points from my field, from my perspective, because I am an HR practitioner, so what are they? Yes. Good. Please, thanks. So, I will not again touch the weak side of the gender parity or the women development that we have less representation. No. I will touch the strong side. And what is the strong side? The strong side is the competitive age of soft skills. Today, the organization are betting on professionalism. And women are much better than men in professionalism. So if you're bringing women, you're bringing right competitive age to your organization. Points number one. Number two, better problem solving, diversity of perspective. Yes. If we all have that man mentality, that man ideology, there won't be any kind of diversity. I see this TEDx is organized very beautifully because I see beautiful men and women here. Right. Number three. 
Yes, what we are doing today, if we are running a school, university, right, a cafe, a restaurant, any other business, we are all in the business of customer care. This is our main business. Whatever we are doing, the main business that we have, it's customer care. So, right, a better reflection in customer care can come when you have women because they bring reflection and they bring that professionalism. Number four, stronger ethics, fairness, and transparency. I'm not quoting the reports. I'm not quoting the data here, but it's very clear, and we all agree on this thing, that when it comes to transparency, when it comes to fairness, right, women are much better than men. It's a reality. So if you want to fight with corruption, right, Mr. Shuda, earlier spoke, right? I thought that he will touch a bit of the corruption side as well. But that's the strongest thing, right, in the society. If you want to fight with corruption, bring women to the leadership and experience that. I guarantee you that you can fight it. The last thing, more profit. Women are strong communicators and strong negotiators, right? I earlier said that we are in the business of customer care. So when we are in the business of customer care, right, whatever we do, we need strong communication and negotiation. And we do believe that women, right, have better skills as compared to the male. So these five strong sides, right, are the reasons that we need to have gender parity on organization and society. And we need to work, right, towards women empowerment, women development, and womanizing societies. Next slide. Just do it. Don't think too much. It's the right thing to do. Thank you very much.